Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chris Thorne Show. What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Chris Thorns. As always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching my content. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a, a story I want to bring to you. Um, and actually, I'm kind of I'm late with this story. This story is pr approximately a month old now. But there's a reason why I'm bringing it up this time around and giving my thoughts on the story itself. We're going to be talking about uh, right now, a young man by the name of Thomas Valva. If I said that right, Thomas Valva. Uh, the meats and the potatoes of the story that I got in is that his dad was a cop. All right. His dad was a cop and his dad starved him, left him in the garage. The boy froze in the garage and a couple of other things that uh, I remember hearing uh, were not. But uh, I will play a video that I found that I downloaded, you know what I'm saying, to catch up with some people who may not know about the story. I remember hearing about the young man. Just ain't had a chance to get around to it. Just like a lot of stories I get sent that I just don't. Man, a lot of times I still had a time to get to them. But I still appreciate everybody who sends the stories. But what I'm doing here is a once again showing how CPS felt this young man. What are you going to hear in the video that I'm about to play is uh, the people down in Suffolk County is rallying up to be up. I guess the uh, the policies or the protocols of how CPS handle certain situations. All right, uh, and you also going to hear that there were eleven reports made to CPS about this young man being with his father. And he was in danger while he was with his father. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the screen here, let's have a listen. The shocking death of an eight-year-old boy who froze to death in his father's garage in January is leading to changes in Suffolk County. Today, officials announced new measures to overhaul child protective services. See, it's twos. Carolyn Gussoff reports now from Hopog. Our community's collective heart was broken. The task force investigating the case of Thomas Valva unveiled its recommendations. The child left in a freezing garage allegedly by his father. The death unearthed a shocking litany of missed cues, suspected child abuse for years. Suffolk officials admit their child protective services system failed. A system that placed Thomas and his brothers in the custody of this man, of a system that did not hear the pleas of people trying to protect Thomas. Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone announcing fundamental changes to that system. Six proposed new laws, among them enhanced scrutiny of complaints by school officials. Caseloads will be reduced to 12 per month. This system is just not set up to effectively protect kids on the autism spectrum or other kids with developmental disabilities. Valva was autistic. Educators had complained to CPS. He was coming to school hungry, bruised, wearing urine-soaked clothing. A special needs unit will now be created and new training to teach caseworkers to identify their own possible bias. The accused father was a police officer. CPS will never operate the same way again. And that is appropriate. Because what happened to Thomas Valva 
can never happen again. Additional staff will be hired, but doesn't the public deserve to know specifically what went wrong, how so many red flags were ignored, especially from educators I mean, uh, in this case? I Amen. Mean, yeah, I mean. Malone says specifics are still being reviewed by the state. Legislators are calling for an independent investigation. And if, in fact, they found out this was wrongdoing, people should be fired and the commissioner should resign. The county executive says the proposals mm -hmm. are just the mm -hmm. beginning of systemic mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. The work will continue. On Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News. Falva's mother said in a statement that the, the changes are unacceptable. She wants the bill to include a requirement that all CPS and all court interactions with children be videotaped, which she says is needed to combat corruption. Her complete statement can be found at CBSNewYork.com. All right, guys. So uh, I wanted y'all to hear that. And, um, you know, and once again, because of the, the CPS, you know, even the people down there are so folk, if I'm saying that right, I know I miss her words. The way things was handled with this young man's case, they were just saying, hey, it was just handled uh, inappropriately. It could have been handled better. Um, if you got all these reports going on, then, you know, something needs to be done and nothing was done. Uh, but see, but then the guy said, you know, hey, you know, we need to beef this up so things like this won't happen to another children like Valva. But I say this, you know, it need to be beef up all around the globe where shit like this won't happen to no children at all, period. If you get numerous calls, you know, I mean, something should tell you something. But now here's the tricky part to that. If people constantly making calls out of spite, you know, that can cause an issue from my understanding. So like the lady asked, I like what she asked at the end. You know, one of my questions would be, you know, what can we do about people that's intentionally making a false cause? You know, they need to get that fixed too. When people intentionally making false calls out of spite, you know, they need to find something to get that shit right there and check as well. You know, uh, I don't know how I didn't, I missed this story. You know, I would have got up on this if I knew CPS was involved. And then kind of find out he was suffering from autism as well. So they make this story even more, even more sad. Even more sad. Um, I'm going to see if I can come back later this evening and have Spencer home because I called Spencer yesterday. And I asked him to tell me a little bit about CPS. And what she told me stunned the hell out of me but i'm gonna let i'm gonna let her tell y'all or any of y'all who has dealt with cps before when she told me how the mechanism work and how easy it is for them just to come and just see just the littlest things and say oh, okay there's no problem here i was shocked i said you gotta be kidding me she said she wasn't kidding so um if i can i'm gonna see if i can come back later on tonight and have her on the show and have her teach me about CPS. Not only teach me, but anybody who's going to listen. Teach anybody who's going to listen about CPS and how it actually works. You know, y'all know Spence ain't been wrong yet. So I'm pretty much sure y'all hear what she has to say. She won't be wrong this time. And I guarantee you that whoever listened to her voice and what she said, if you ever dealt with that, y'all probably come in and come, come and say, say, you know what? She's on point. It's just that simple sometimes, and it's just that easy for them to look and say, oh, okay, ain't nothing wrong here. Shocking. Shocking. But I also want to say this, too. A lot of times it probably people on the inside that's working, too. You know, one of the things that uh, they know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. It's one of them things, too. You understand? It's one of the things, too. So we got to look out for that as well. Who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and maybe profiting off the shit. Amen. So kudos to the people in Suffolk who's trying to get changes in order. Now, I would have to go back and find what the mother said. She said this is unacceptable. And I'm sure she got her reasons why. So I need to go back and find why she feel it's unacceptable and read it to the audience and let y'all tell me, you know, does she have a point or not? Because, guys, I'm still learning. I did a show with, with a CPS person from down here in Tennessee. 
And y'all know we had a lot of people in that chat room and a lot of people didn't really like what the guy was saying. And that's because they had their own dealings with CPS and their children or foster children, whoever they had in their presence. You know, so they feel like, you know, now nah, he's covering some things up, you know. But even he said, though, yeah, I know there's things, a lot of things I'm saying, you know, they not sitting too well where, you know, they was they was actually not pleased with that. But other than that, though, it was a show that needed to be half. As a matter of fact, maybe I need to have them back on the show again. CPS Protective Services. um, And do an update and see how things changed. But one thing I asked Spencer was, you know, Far as the CPS store works, is it the same process around the globe or is it a different process in different states and cities? Y'all remember Antoinetta? Even though she got locked up for doing what she did, but she even tried to call CPS and say, hey, it's shit, some foul shit going on over there with the dad and his girlfriend. Y'all need to get my baby up out of there. And y'all saw she came in. They said they came in, didn't even look all over her body, anything. They just did, did a quick look and say, hey, we don't find anything. But even with that, though, I read y'all the history with Rika Roundtree or the CPS being called back and forth. Even with that, nothing was done. And that's sad for a child like her. And it's sad for a young man like him. Both of them suffered at the hands of their own father. But the only thing with Rika, she suffered at the hands of her father and his girlfriend. Amen. Guys, I want to bring up something else uh, that I had pulled up that I want y'all to see. Because somebody from down there from social services spoke up the video is old but i want y'all to hear uh what they had to say so let me see if i can pull this up new fallout today there we after go. an nypd officer is charged with the murder of his eight-year-old son on long island good evening you know that's a crazy thing he was an officer he was an officer murdered his own child once again, I'm Maurice Dubois. And I'm Christine Johnson. Welcome back to CBS 2 News, now streaming on CBS and New York. Today, Suffolk County Social Services Commissioner made her first public comments since Thomas Valva's death. Strangers by the hundreds have reached out to the boy's mother as a wellspring of sympathy grows. Jennifer McLogan has more as CBS 2 investigates. The eight-year-old boy inside the white casket with gold trim had been deprived of food, subjected to sleeping in an unheated garage as punishment, say police, for bedwetting. And it is alleged for failure to follow his NYPD father's strict directives. As Michael Valva and fiance Angela Polina convinced courts to grant them sole custody, Mother Justina obtained audio of her three sons oh, posting Lord. it on social media. Judges declined to enter this into evidence. Evidence. Who do you love? Daddy Who do you want to stay with? Daddy Who do you miss? Daddy Who do you want to live with? Daddy Mommy is mean. Daddy is mean. Mommy hits me. Mommy hits me. Mommy don't touch me. Mommy don't touch me. Child advocate groups back the authenticity of the tapes. Thomas and his brother Anthony were used as pawns, claims their mother, who recorded the children describing life with their father. We again asked Suffolk's Department of Social Services commissioner for a sit-down interview. I'm not sure yet. Frances Pierre, appointed less than a year ago, told members of a CPS task force she is unable to publicly discuss Thomas Valva's case, but said more workers will be hired. So again, we're doing active recruiting. We're also working 
with civil service. We've really been doing a lot of work in ensuring that we're decreasing the caseload. Lawmakers challenged the DSS commissioner. A big house with a cop dad does not mean a child is safe. She said CPS workers know not to judge a book by its cover. In Suffolk County, Long Island, Jennifer McLogan, CBS 2 News. Y'all hear that? Um, so it sounds like this is another case where the dad and his girlfriend, whoever the fuck she was, was harming their child. And it seemed like the dad allowed the abuse of this child as well as he was abusing the child as well and then doing these fuck ass uh recordings manipulating the children talk about who they want to stay with in this day the third you know this is a motherfucker ridiculous and you know i'm glad i don't have any biological children but you know uh, uh a lot of females with children you know uh throughout my lifetime i came attached to as I known them, one of his friends, or was I was dating them, or whatever the case may be, and uh, hell, I ended up adopting all of them. You know, not you know, not legally adopted, but I call I adopted them. You know, because uh, you know I grown accustomed to them or whatnot. But you know, I don't know how nuts I would go if I had actual biological children, and I was in this situation where. My child ended up staying with a baby mom, and the baby mom got this new Negro, and uh, or whoever she dating, this Negro, or this white dude, or whatever, whoever she dating, that you would sit up there and allow this man, this strange man, to come in our child's life and to do this shit. And not only that, you know, um, you allow him to do this to our child. Same with them two disgusting motherfuckers who I did the story on last week. Kendall and Ashley Burnett. Two sick son of a bitches. Well, all of them sick. And have you noticed? Two cases like that was mixed couple. This is the first one out of did where both of them was white. So again, what I say in this situation, what y'all can say. White folks do it too. In this situation, y'all can say that is y'all can say that. White folks do it too. Because this is three stories I've done. Somebody white was involved in abusing a child. The on the bright side to one of them stories. When the children didn't die. But she's going to have a lot of healing to do. Once she grow to understand what was going on with her. Amen. Amen. Guys, like I said, later on, uh, I'm going to get in contact with Spencer and uh, see if she's going to have any availability tonight. And I want to bring her on and uh, we're going to talk about the CPS thing and let her teach me about the CPS. And as well as teaching uh, any other young generation who's listening, you know, so y'all probably can think on this um, before y'all having children or whatnot. Because this is a topic that really needs to be discussed hard and heavy. Hard and heavy. Uh, rest in peace, uh, young Thomas. Uh, and as always to the dad and whoever helped him do this, you know, hey, rest in hell, rest in hell. Um, anybody who know of this story and you got some information you want to bring to me that I can speak on, you know, I know I'm real late with this story, but when I saw this, you know, I just said, Hey, I got to, I got to speak on this. But if you, if you have any information on this story, you know, please leave in the comment section, section, what more have you heard about this story? what was going on with this young man. I would love to get every bit of piece of information that I can get about this story. Because again, guys, this is some motherfucking ridiculous. And some way, somehow, it has to stop. Amen. On your man, Chris Thorns, thanks for listening. And as always, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you later.